What's good, world? This is Max Resitar from Slam Kicks, and you're watching the first episode of The Soul Connection. Now, this series is dedicated to the best basketball sneakers of all time. So we're going to span generations, go through both the NBA and WNBA, to talk about what makes these legendary sneakers so legendary. And along the way, we'll find out why they really do connect us all. The only place to start this series is with code. So we got the four, the five, and the six here. But before we get into the pairs, we gotta say to Kobe and to Gigi and to Peyton and Sarah and Christina and Ara and Alyssa and Carrie and John. There are millions of us who miss you and millions of us who love you. And a year later, five, 10, 50, 100 years later, you will always be remembered. Before we get into the four, we gotta go all the way back to Italy. You gotta go to Reggio Emilia, which is where Kobe spent part of his childhood because his dad was playing pro ball over there. And Kobe spent a lot of time by himself. A lot of people that he was growing up with, they weren't trying to play ball, they were trying to play soccer. So after Kobe was done getting his work in on the court, he would go and play the beautiful game. And the appreciation that he got for that game and the love that he got for that game he would carry that with him for years, for the rest of his life. He would then translate it later into these sneakers because he started to clock some things. He started to realize, okay, similar movements, right? A lot of stopping and starting, a lot of cutting on a dime, range of motion, the ankles were similar. And so the hunger that he developed, it wasn't just a hunger to win and a hunger to dominate that we would see. It wasn't just a hunger to make your favorite player look stupid. No, it was a hunger for knowledge. And that was something that really defined Kobe. He asked so many questions. He asked questions of other athletes, of business people, of his teammates, of musicians, and of actors. And most importantly for us here, he asked questions of his Nike design team. So he one day went to Eric Avar, who's a legendary Nike designer, did pennies, did 08 Hyperdunks, did all these right here. And he said, Avar, yo, like, like what's good? Like, why do I gotta play ball on high tops? Like everyone I grew up playing soccer with, everyone in the pros right now, they wear these these lightweight, low cut boots that don't restrict their ankles. We all make similar movements, right? And so he asked Avar, what's good? And Avar, which, you know, to his credit, it's not really his fault because the common knowledge out there for a long time was that low top basketball sneakers are a no-no. You need a high top to protect those ankles. But after doing some research and after Kobe doing a lot of convincing, Avar and his team came back with the Kobe 4. And the Kobe 4 had everything that Kobe had asked for. Low, light, technologically advanced, beautifully designed. You got the classic toe box with the perforations, like an like a Air Jordan 1, you got the nice big Nike swoosh. And then you have this technology in here, which is still cutting edge. You have Nike Flywire, right here, carbon fiber shank, zoom cushioning, and then the secret sauce, the heel counter. So Avar and the team figured out if you have a good heel counter, if your heel is locked in, you don't gotta worry about your ankles. You could be wearing mids or lows or highs. As long as that heel is locked in, you're set. It's time to get buckets. You see this sculpted heel back here, right in, and then he didn't have to worry about wasting movements. He didn't have to worry about wasting milliseconds, which would then translate to wasting buckets and then wasting wins. And then his ultimate fear was that he was wasting an opportunity to win titles. And so with his sneakers in place, this is ring number four right here. It's not this colorway, but this is the sneaker that he wore during the 09 finals when he beat the Orlando Magic and he got his first finals MVP. The Kobe four was along for the ride. And the tech in this sneaker, Flywire, Carbon Fiber, Zoom, heel counter. This was, this was a lightning rod. If you look at basketball now, everyone's wearing low tops. You go anywhere, go to any playground, you go to the NBA, the W, pro ball, college, high school, everyone's wearing low tops. And that started because of this guy right here. Also, shout out to Gilbert Arenas. You know you did it first. But with Kobe, this sneaker was a monster. Flywire. So Flywire was inspired by Bridges. So a long time ago, when the world was still being built, when engineers were trying to figure out a way to construct bridges, they noticed that 
if you had support placed strategically, you didn't need a ton of material. Same thing with Flywire. This is a minimal material, super light, but it's placed in areas where the foot experiences stress. But when it's locked in correctly, it takes care of the job. You're not gonna hurt your ankle, you're not gonna roll anything. Everything is safe and secure and locked in. And then the zoom cushioning, nice little bounce underfoot. And then the heel counter, a monster. So the four was a building block because things got even lower and lighter with the five. Again, fly wire up top, you got the carbon fiber below, cushioning as well, same fly wire material. Heel counter, as you can see the evolution in the heel counters, but again, sculpted back here. So the foot just goes right in and you're safe and secure. With the technology in place, the Kobe 5 and specifically this Bruce Lee colorway, it really started to lend itself to what Kobe would become famous for years later, which is storytelling. So you'll see the storytelling here with the Bruce Lee call out. This is the Bruce Lee colorway. And Bruce Lee, a master of his own mind, a master of his own body, Kobe tried to take Bruce Lee's teachings and apply them to the game of basketball. To learn more about Kobe as a person, I linked up with Atiba Jefferson, a Los Angeles-based skateboard photographer and basketball photographer who has shot more than 100 slam covers and, through 20 years of working with him, became a friend of Kobe's. So, in the, in the time that you worked with him, late 90s, all the way up until 2020, how did you see him and his personality evolve? He wanted to always um, know what's going on with the shoot, how the shoot was going, what was gonna be the shoot. And, you know, he loved being involved. He loved being creative. So, you know, and he, he just, if it was a good idea, he was on board, you know? And he, he was also just such a hard worker. That was the other thing. So, you know, anytime we had a shoot, if I really, if he knew I needed it, he was gonna do it. There's the slam cover where he's, you know, there's two Kobe's. And, you know, that was a composite one. And, and, and there was a lot to think about. And, and Melissa, the art director, wasn't with me. So I was kind of being art director and I was like, Kobe, I'm so sorry. I, you know, he had to change uniforms a couple of times. I was like, Kobe, can you change uniform one more time? And I, I just want to double check. He's like, anything for you, because I know it's going to be good. So the last times I saw him, on the court, his last game, everything. That last season, I shot a couple games up for for, for y'all, where I just followed him. He he was so relaxed and content and happy. You know, a lot of times in his career, he wouldn't even like I could shoot him before a game, and once he was on the court, he was that was it, that was it, like that was it. Like he wasn't talking to anyone. You didn't even bother Kobe, he'd look right through you. As last season, I was following him and shooting the game and I just got used to it. And he's sitting on the, he's sitting on the bench before they, they, they do the pre, the, the, the uh, not starting lineup announcement. And he puts his fist out and I'm like, I look behind me. Cause I'm like, oh, who's behind him, you know? He's like, Tiva. I'm like, oh, you know, because he didn't do that. He was so focused his whole career. So, you know, but as soon as he walked off the court, Tiva, you what? So good to, you know? So it was, you know, I, 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 I it's just great. He, he, he was awesome. You know, looking back, there was no one like him, you know, with that work ethic. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like there was a real duality to him that we didn't always get to see. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, everybody knew Kobe Mamba mentality, but there was Kobe to the homie. You know, like I I remember he uh, he always he always liked skateboarding. He knew I shot a lot of skateboarding, and uh, there was this contest that actually the Maloofs were throwing. It's called the Maloof Money Cup, and it was in Orange County. And I was like, I shot Kobe a couple days before, and I was like, dude, there's this contest in Orange County. I'm not even gonna go, but you should go. Cause the best skateboarders in the world will be there. Sure enough, I, this was Twitter. I don't even think Instagram was around. I just see everybody with that got a photo with him. He just pulled up to the event. Speaking of shoes, right here, I got him in the box. Like, I have these. 
also the other camera too. Story time, please. What is the story? <laughs> these are um, these are some Air Force Ones with his face laser etched on them. And uh, I would get shoes or jerseys signed uh, by players. And I was like, dude, I gotta get those signed. So yeah, they're just these laser etched Air Force Ones. There's LeBron ones and there's Kobe ones. And they came out at the same time. I don't know if they were exclusive for undefeated. That's where I got them, but yeah. So I was like, yeah, I gotta get these signed by Kobe. It'd be dope to have some shoes versus a jersey. Did he react when he spelled them? Yeah, he was definitely like, you know, he was obviously a part of them being made, but he was just like, sick, you got them. You know, he's just always, he, he was just, he, he was never like grumpy or anything. He was, he was never grumpy. He was always like, Sight. Like it, it was really cool. The photo shoot that hasn't really seen the light of day is him in a locker room with all the great jerseys behind him and in, in, in uh, all the Laker trophies. And that was completely his idea. And he was supposed to actually write it and he didn't write it. And that's why they didn't, weren't able to print it. So it was supposed to be Kobe by Kobe. Um, you know, so. Yes, you know, he, we were always talking about what's the concept, you know, even when we did uh, the one, the cover shoot with Gigi, he was like really about like, okay, this is the formation, how's everyone's arms, like this is how it looks, you know? So yeah, Kobe was always storytelling. He was always involved. He was always being creative. With this sneaker and with this sneaker, the combination of the both of them, then open the door for the Kobe 6. Avar used to say, this is the perfect mixture of art and science, which was something he used to describe Kobe's game. The science that Kobe applied to basketball, the way that he studied footwork and angles, would then translate to the way that he would kiss the ball off the glass, off the fadeaway, and to the way that he would break people down, and to the way that he would play basketball in a symphonic nature. And this art and science, this expression and performance is captured perfectly in the Kobe 6. As you'll notice, there's a difference up top. It's no longer fly wire. This is polyurethane. And the reason that it was incorporated in the 6 is because the storytelling that Kobe started here with the 5, he turned it up to an 11. This is the first time that he started to acknowledge the Black Mamba mentality the Mamba mentality that we still celebrate him for to this day. And with this reptile-like upper, he made a statement. He said, you guys are in trouble. You guys are my prey. I'm the apex predator. And the Kobe 6, with the reptile upper, with the evolved heel counter, again, sculpted back here, carbon fiber underfoot, zoom cushioning again. When he walked out on Christmas Day in 2010 against the Heatles, Ron, D. Wade, Chris Bosch, bright lights. And he wasn't wearing a pair of purple and yellow sneakers. Everyone was like, is this dude crazy? Uh-uh. He was different. Kobe was always different. He was always, always, always different. A green sneaker with uh, tonal accents and with red up top and a black swoosh. 10 years later, this is still the best Kobe. This is still the perfect representation of who he was as a player and as a person. And the art and the science that he approached life with summed up beautifully right here. And now that we've lost Kobe, these sneakers are way more than sneakers. These are extensions of him. These are artifacts. These are real life things that we can touch to transport us right back to a memory. Fourth ring, fifth ring the best Kobe ever. See, these are the extensions of the moments that we carry with us to this very day. And these are a reminder as to how we should live life, as to how Kobe lived life, as to how he tried something different, as to how he wanted to emulate his heroes. And then ultimately, as to how he created a masterpiece. Thank you for watching the first episode of The Soul Connection. Kobe, love him.